My name's Duncan. I'm one of the gardeners down here at the Great Yarmouth Venetian Waterways. I'll be walking you through and taking you through some of the rich heritage that we have down here. Okay, we're looking at the Venetian Waterways side of things here because the waterways are split into two component parts. We have the boating lake further at top, which you've probably seen previously, and with Ian the head gardener. This part here is the Venetian Waterways itself, which was constructed in 1928 as a work relief project um, created after the First World War. The project down here took six months to build. Um, bearing in mind this is nearly four and a half acres the length of the waterway or encompasses four and a half acres. Um, it was dug by hand and concreted in six months from January to June by 427 men. That's a mean, no mean feat at all really is it? I mean you think about it nowadays even machinery they couldn't do it so quick. However it was done, it was dusted. They brought in 6,639 tonnes of soil from Caister for the sand that they removed from here. This used to be part of the beach. Um, the new sea defences were being built. You can probably see them as you take a walk along um, in 1928. So they decided they'd do something useful with the land in between, between the sea defences and the promenade. So they constructed the waterways. There were many, many different schemes. Nine different schemes in all were put together by Mr. S.P. Thompson, who was the borough engineer to the council for consideration. This was the one that they selected. It could have been a host of different ones, including ones called Nelson's Caves, which would have not been as creative, shall we say. Okay, well, we started at the southern entrance. Uh, we're standing on now um, the Venetian Bridge, which was inspired by the Rialto Bridge in Venice. Um, this is a somewhat smaller version of the Rialto Bridge, but it leads quite nicely onto the garden further down with the sundial. At the moment, we're standing in the area with the sundial. This is designed to look like a clover leaf. The sundial itself, although this is rather up to date and new, the plinth and this bottom staging are original from 1928. In fact, on the sundial, there's a quote from Anna Sewell. It says, it is good people who make good places. The Southern Shelter. This is an original thatched building. This is the original feature. Although it's had many sort of refurbishments over the years, well, it's going to need to really, bearing in mind it's almost 100 years old. It hasn't done too bad, all said and done. And um, if we now walk this way, we're heading down to what is an Italian style sunken garden with many different plants. So if we walk down here, there's my barrow and my fleece, which is where I was earlier. Um, we're looking here, it's not looking its best, but equally it's not looking its worst either. Um, this time of year, plants are quite kind of just starting to come into their own. You can probably see with the lavenders, etc., they're starting to shoot, although they're not in flower at the moment. And the same with the salvias, which is a purple sage. Um, and once this does flower, the purples and blues work so well together. And it's a beautiful part of the garden. Come down and have a look. The Rockery Island. You'll see a picture in a minute of what it was like originally. Um, lots of little rocks. It looked a bit like a a bit like a hedgehog of kind of sorts and the boat was going just a little way up here it's changed over time and it's changed during the refurbishment with a lot of bigger rocks however the main feature through the middle which is the circular planting area used to be a water fountain and it had three tiers on it that went all the way up it looked really beautiful but that island, the way that's been planted up now, that looks really, really good. And if you were here today, um, the scent, the scent from the broom there, the scent from the other plants that are out in flower is absolutely amazing. Here we are, we're, we're in the sunken garden. It's not the Italian sunken garden, because that's for the back. Throughout this whole area of the sunken garden, which is quite substantial here, um, this takes up a number of hours of our time, just keeping the, keeping the grass down, keeping the plants a good trim. Again, you're not seeing it at its best, but this took a hell of a lot of man hours to get things right, to trim the edges up. 
to get the flower, flower beds reinstated and replanted. Um, the model boat lake that's here, uh, model boat club hut, and the facilities, the key heading, etc. All original by the oak posts. The model boat club lake, or that's what we call it now, was the home of five electric boats named after all the principal rivers in Norfolk the Ant, the Bure, the Waveney, the Chet. I'm trying to remember another one for life of me, I can't, but never mind, it doesn't, doesn't mind. There was five of them. Originally, there were ships' lifeboats, which had animal figureheads put on the, on the, on the prow of the boat. Anyway, the boats ran on electric, um, on electricity, um, which they recharged overnight. The model boat club hut um, houses the, or did house the battery charging system with cables that went under the water and there was a tra uh, kind of tree on the um, big concrete mat that was there and the, uh, the cables from there were taken off and plugged into the boats so they could, uh, they could charge overnight. Back down here, this is actually the front of the model boat club hut. You can see a little bit, uh, a little bit better the expanse of water that's here, which is the, the main sort of boating lake here for the model boat club people. And it's the central part of the waterways because we have all of the different uh, avenues through the waterways all come, all collected, all collect here, um, because we have two others this side as well. The heyday of the waterways were in the 1950s and the 1960s, um, obviously a post-war period. Um, when Yarmouth was a, a big boom town then as well for tourist attractions. And as such, when we had the boats that moored up here, um, these original rings, metal rings here, iron rings here, um, they used to do this day and night. And the people that, obviously people got on the boat with the holiday makers, uh, up to 30 people at a time, and they'd take them all the way around the waterways. There are various drop-off points as you can see, or key heading spots for people to get in and out of boats from. But it all started from here, and this is the, the place where they would have been charged, as I said before. Equally at night times, you used to have a number of different characters, Walt Disney characters, and the place was lit up as well. Um, one of the more sort of famous exhibits